The circular economy is everybody's business. And climate change is something we cannot ignore. So over the last three months, we have seen horrible things happening in this planet. So we started with some uh, hurricanes in the US, 300 billion of economic losses. We the, followed by some uh, floods in Chennai, uh, hundreds, even thousands of people died. They followed by some uh, fires in Spain, in Portugal, in California. And then now in December, when I look at my skis, I see that I cannot go skiing because there's not enough snow in the mountains. And every year, the ski season is starting later than later. And when we go skiing, we see that the glaciers are shrinking. So this is the world, how it looks like with a one degree, a plus one degree pre-industrial levels. Can you imagine how the world is going to look with three degrees? That's where we're heading. So the question is not if we should do something. This, the question is, what should we do? So in that case, the circular economy is one of the solutions. And it's a solution that concerns all of us, not only business. So the circular economy is about optimizing the use of resources and eliminating waste. Okay? Zero waste, that's the aspirational. And this is a concept that has been, not with this name, but has been existing for many years. No? And so many companies are improving the way that they manage their processes. But now what is changing is that companies are looking on how to improve the design of the products and even the design of the business models. So that at the end, the resources are optimized and the, there is no waste on it. Or if there is waste, it is sold. So this is a $4.5 trillion opportunity. And this is not an opportunity for big business. Actually, it's an opportunity for all of us. So this is about reducing the use of resources, which often has a high energy debt on it, and as a consequence, GHG emissions. This is also about reducing waste, so that we get to zero waste. Because we sell waste to other players that might need that waste. So the circular economy is in your life, and maybe you don't know it. But actually, you know, when you, ride, uh, you share a ride in a car, you're saving emissions. In fact, Lyft calculated that in 2025, in the US, by using shared vehicles and electric vehicles, emissions could be reduced by 5.5 megatons of CO2. When you watch a movie online or a series, you're reducing emissions by 70% because you're not going to the shop to get the DVD. In Korea, a company, Samsung, is using recycled packaging for delivery of their refrigerators. Because who cares about whether that package has been reused? Do you? And finally, on a more personal note, a couple of weeks ago, I had a school reunion, 25 years since we finished school. And I was talking to a friend, and he was talking to me about his business, and he was saying how proud he was that actually, during the business, he found that he could use the, the wasted plastics to reinject it in the production process of the product. And he was smiling, and he didn't know this was circular economy, and he didn't know that he was reducing environmental degradation. He knew that he was saving money, and that made him smile. I smile for other reasons, because that was a, a good proof that we were right. So, landfill, game over. That's the aspiration. That's what we need to aim at. We cannot afford to have resources that are valuable on landfill. And also, the world cannot afford it. There's too many people that are going to be living in this planet. There's too many goods that are going to be consumed. So, we have a long way to go. So, I don't know if you knew, but food loss and waste worldwide accounts to 4.4 gigatons of CO2. And this is something that affects all of us, because I'm sure we all, you know, myself and you all probably lose some, some food on the way. This is more emissions than the European Union. Okay, so if food loss and waste was a country, it would be the th third largest emitter of the world of GHG emissions, after China and the US. Another example, aluminium. We can, um, by using recycled aluminium, we can reduce 90% of the energy. And these things are happening and because they make business sense. But at the flip side of circular economy, it's not only mitigation, it's also resilience. So resilience, it, it, 
it's our ability to recover from events, extreme events, impacts in our lives uh, and come back to normal operation as soon as possible. Well, we know that there's going to be so much demand on some resources that the world cannot, does not have enough resources. No? So we need to secure our, you know, our, our products and we need to reduce the use of these valuable products. Let me give you some examples. So we know that mobile phones tend to end in landfill and we know that there is a lot of precious materials inside. So actually 10% of the world gold is included in, in, in electronics um, equipment. So actually who would throw a ring, you know, a wedding ring to the landfill? Would you? I hope not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, let's continue. <laughs> so, when we look at... Um, so there are many companies that are actually using, uh, looking at marketplaces where we, they can uh, purchase these second-hand uh, materials. No? And industrial symbiosis, that's what it's called, is about a company selling its waste to a company that actually uses it because it needs it for something. So, for example, steel companies are selling their CO2 and we can produce advanced biofuels that then can be sold to the airlines so that we can reduce emissions. Finally, another aspect of resilience is that business and ourselves as well, we need to future-proof our business. There's something that is shocking, and it's this report that says that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. And that's something that we cannot afford. Yeah? And so what can we do? Well, actually, there is this trend by companies like P&G, BMW, uh, Dell, for example, which are increasing the use of recycled plastics in their products. So you also have a role to play because actually when, we, when you see a bottle of shampoo in the supermarket that is made from recycled plastics, you can see that actually by buying that, uh, that product, you are reducing the amount of waste that is going to the ocean. So at the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, we have a vision. And that vision is that 9 billion people living well within the limits of the planet. So we work with 200 companies in trying to pursue this vision. And we want to make more sustainable business more successful. And we collaborate across the industries, across the same industry or in between industries. But business realize that alone they cannot solve, of course, this problem. Governments also realize that alone they cannot solve the, the problems that we have in front of us and that we need to collaborate. And I will add that we also need the consumers to work together so that 9 billion people live well within the limits of the planet. And that is why the circular economy is everyone's business. Thank you.